Good morning, Year 6. It's uh, Tuesday and it's our English uh, session uh, right now. Now, uh, for our English um, today, we're going to be looking at an element of grammar, um, and in particular, the active and passive uh, voice, uh, something that you may have heard of before. Uh, we have mentioned it uh, within um, our lessons over the last couple of terms, um, and it's just to recap uh, the use of the active and the passive. Um, uh, in particular, thinking because actually within our next few pieces of writing, you will be able to use the active and the passive uh, within it. So let's have a look to see what the difference between the active um, voice, as it's known as, and the passive voice is. So let's start with an active voice, um, and it says in an active sentence, the subject performs the action, so the verb, to the object. So we've got a subject and an object, and in the active, the subject is performing that action to the object. Now the passive, the thing that would normally be the object, gets turned into the subject through the use of the passive form of the verb. And they often include a prepositional phrase starting with by, but not always the case, and there'll be some examples when that is fulfilled. Right? So uh, in the passive, the object gets turned into the subject. So let's try to identify the subject and the object within these sentences. Um, and to be able to recognize and use the active and passive, you must be able to identify the parts of the sentence. So in the following sentences, the subject is in the darker blue, the action or the verb is in the lighter blue, and the object is in the sort of um, greenish colour. Uh, it may be different on your screen, but from where I'm looking at, that's uh, what I can see. Right? So the plane is bordered by the family. So the plane is the subject. The object is the family. The damage was caused by the storm. Damage is the subject. Storm is the object. And the verb was caused. Isaac threw a ball at the window. So the subject is Isaac and the object is the ball. And obviously the action being through. The next sentence, the magician pulled a rabbit from a hat. So the subject is the magician and the object is the rabbit. Next example, Helen practiced her recorder every day. Helen is the subject and the object is the recorder. And in the last one, the flowers were grown by my nan. Flowers being the subject, nan being the object. And it says here, did you notice the preposition by in some of these sentences? The plane is bordered by the family, for example. The flowers were grown by my nan. Now, some of the time, this would indicate that those sentences are written in the passive. So the plane is bordered by the family, is the passive. To change it into the active, you would need to swap the family and the plane around. The family bordered the plane. Right? And that changes from passive to active. So here's some examples. And it says active or passive. Sort these sentences into the correct places in the table. So you've got six sentences. Would you put them in as an active sentence or would you put them as a passive sentence? So think about that preposition by. That may indicate that maybe that is written in the passive. So pause the video, have a look at them, decide whether you think they are active or passive. Once you've done that, unpause the video and have a look at the answer. Well done for having a go, year six. Let's see if you managed to get those right. So the active, the magician pulled a rabbit from the hat. Right? I wonder if you can identify what the subject is and what the object is. Well, the subject is the magician, the object is the rabbit. Right? Isaac threw a ball at the window, is also active, and Helen practiced her recorder every day. So well done if you got those right. Let's have a look at the passive sentences then. The plane is boarded by the family. The damage was caused by the storm. The flowers were grown by my nan. 
And all of these, hopefully you've identified the preposition by. And that's indicating it's being used and uh, to help form the passive sentence. Right. Here's one for you to just go through. Right. And then there's examples of how that would be changed on the next slide itself. So pause the video, have a look, and then unpause the video and have a look at the answers next. Well done for having a go. See if you manage to change those um, from active to passive. Well done if you did. Um, so it says, read these passive sentences, what do you notice about them? The jewellery was stolen, the bicycle was ridden, the present was open. Open, sorry. They all have an action and a subject, but none of them have an object. Sometimes the prepositional, by, phrase, can be removed and the sentence will still make sense. You just don't know who or what formed the verb. And this is a really good way of... Um, adding a bit of it's uh, sort of brilliant to your writing and a bit of mystery. The jewellery was stolen by the robber. You, as a writer, are informing a reader who stole it. In this example, the jewellery was stolen. It's not identified who stole it. So sometimes you're leaving it to the reader to try to infer maybe who stole it, maybe try to predict who stole the jewellery. Or maybe you just want to hide it for that purpose that you're going to revisit actually who it was stolen by in later chapters. So we don't always necessarily need to use um, the, um, the subject of who is performing that passive sentence. So just think about that sometimes because it's a really good way of adding a bit of mystery to your writing and really getting that reader thinking about what they can infer or what they can predict about it. The present was opened. It doesn't say by who. That's for the reader to try to work out who it is. Right? But that is written in the passive. Right? Um, asking you for another activity here. Can you write description of these photos in the active voice? Right? So just have a look at those pictures. How would you write an active sentence? Don't forget that the subject is performing something to the object. Right? So pause the video. Write a example of an active sentence and then I'll just put a couple of examples on the next page for you to have a look at once you've tried your own. So my examples were the children enjoyed climbing during their school camp. All right so the children being the subject okay climbing being um, the verb in that one okay um, second one they spent the day kayaking down they being the subject, right? kayaking uh, being um, the verb there for that sentence. So this time, can you write descriptions of these photos in the passive voice? And I'll put some examples on the next page for there. So look at the pictures, write down a couple of passive sentences, one for each picture, and see what you could have written on the next So here, tasty cupcakes were baked by my aunt for my birthday party. We got that prepositional phrase of by. The water balloons were blown up by my brother. The water pipe. So we got the by here. Now let's take the second example there. The water balloons were blown up. If you just had that in your sentence, you are still using the passive sentence there. And that would still make sense. All you've done is just hide actually who did it. Right there, quick quiz. It says, can you underline the objects in these sentences? So read each one. What is the object in each sentence? So pause the video, teach yourself what it is, and then unpause the video, have a look at the next slide for the answers. So the first sentence, we've got tree as being um, the object. In the second one, coach being the object. And in the third one, lunch. Well done if you got those right. Fantastic. I wonder if you can think about, well, if those are the object, what are the subjects in those ones? Okay. The subjects, the I, the class, and we. Another quick quiz. I've got these ones the wrong way around, so I do apologise. Um, read those four sentences. Which sentence is written in the passive 
voice. As so again, pause the video, read each one, see which one is written in the pattern. Unpause the video and then have a look at the answer on the next page. Well done if you identified it. The tasty meal was cooked by my mum. Right, you've got that prepositional phrase again, by. Right? Um, again, you could have missed out by my mum and it would still make sense. The tasty meal was cooked. In that instance, it's just not informing you who did the cooking. Right, can you have a go at rewriting those sentences in the passive voice? Right, sometimes you just have to manipulate where those words go within the sentence. Sometimes you may need to add some words for it to make complete sense. So pause the video, have a go, and have a look at the answers on the next page. Okay. Hopefully you had a good go at those, and hopefully you, you got somewhere near uh, the same as what I came up with. Well done for having a go. That's doing that. Right, that's the end of the lesson, but there is a task for you to have a go at now, um, and that's the um, sheet active to passive. So for all of these uh, ones, it's asking you to change the active sentence to a passive one. So for example, Simon Cowell glared at the X Factor contestant, you would need to change that into the passive. So you could put the X Factor contestant was glared at by Simon Cowell, for example. So have a good go at that sheet. If you need to re-watch the video to have some reminders, that is absolutely fine. Try to make yourself as comfortable as possible and give it a good go. Now at the bottom of the sheet there are some answers to see if you've got similar ones to that. Have a good session everyone and we will speak to you tomorrow. Bye.